Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the episode 16 of my mobile networks overview course. In this lesson, we want to have an overview and an introduction on EPC, which is the uh, um, core network for the 4G LTE network. Uh, at first, we should say that uh, we should discuss that uh, what was the motivation for the, for the emergence of this um, generation of mobile networks LTE, which is long term evolution. Uh, as you know, LTE is uh, 39G, but commercially, according to the accept of acceptance of 3GPP, we accept that uh, we can commercially say 4G LTE. Okay. Uh, as you know, many of these standards uh, are generating by successful 3GPP third generation par partnership project. And uh, until uh, really 7, uh, we had GSM uh, that was 2G GPRS, the packet switch of the packet switch of uh, this generation. After that, UMTS for 3G, uh, we have some release R99 to R7. Uh, for example, in R4, uh, we had the separation of CP, control plane, and UP, user plane. Mm, for example, I think that I have discussed this in the um, previous episodes uh, about uh, separating MSC from Media Gateway. As you know, MSC is responsible for control plane and Media Gateway is responsible for, you, uh, for user plane. And in this uh, and in this uh, uh, network structure here, uh, usually use H two H two four eight protocol or mega. And in release five, uh, the important thing that happened in release five was introducing uh, IMS IP multimedia uh, subsystem. And so on, which IMS uh, was uh, is responsible for handling voice over LTE service and in the uh, later uh, episodes I will fully discuss about this IMS and Volta service okay uh, for a uh, brief discussion about the release and uh, if maybe some of you uh, don't know about this we have uh, beside generations of the mobile networks uh, which all of you know that from 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and now, and now, the study of 6G. We have also some release that started with R99. Oh, sorry, it started with R99, and right now R4. I, right now, I think uh, we are on R17. Okay, uh, but from here, from uh, for LTE long term evolution and system architecture evolution, we have these releases R8, R9, R10, and so on. So let's have a, uh, a look at the motivations of uh, uh, emer emergent and uh, um, generation of these uh, mobile networks uh, in 4G. Okay. Uh, we see in in the previous generations in 2G, 3G, PS Core network only support non-real-time services. But uh, in 4G uh, LT, we have the all IP network and many real-time services we have. The all IP network, it is very important. The all IP network contains the PS uh, and voices are jointly provided by the PS and the IP multimedia subsystem. As I told to you, uh, before we have uh, in release 5 uh, during the 3G time IMS was introduced but infrastructure and the speed and the network uh, infrastructure was not uh, enough and was not uh, mature for this service but we see that in when we had LTE uh, the Volta service and IMS was commercially uh, usable. Uh, another thing that we can say that in the previous generation voice services are carried in the CS domain but now uh, you can see that voice uh, can be handled in PS uh, and 
in the vault all of the packets are sending via the uh, via the um, packet core network and ims and the signaling goes on the ims core network and uh, also uh, we see that these uh, the new networks uh, epc eval packet core in fourth generation it's simpler and flattened network architecture support uh, of multiple access technologies and theoretically the data transmission rate is about 100 megabits per second for downlink and about five, uh, 50 megabits per second for uplink but uh, as you know in some countries maybe uh, these these may be very uh, uh, fewer than these amounts uh, but this is ideal ideal uh, okay this is a um, some brief uh, comparison between the uh, previous generations uh, before 4g lt and this generation okay you can see the, in this picture we have uh, separated the network to three different parts here is ue or user equipment in the um, previous generations we told mobile subscriber to this also here we have long-term evolution which is uh, which describe the radio part you see that uh, before in 2g we had bts for the last uh, access base station base transceiver station and we had bsc for controlling this bts in 3g we had node b and rnc radio network controller like this but in 4g lte both of them evolve and one node we have that is e node b also in 5g we have g node b okay i and i don't know uh, what would be the name of the 6g maybe in the future i introduce to you uh, okay so and uh, you see that we have e node b here and many other um, network elements that i will introduce to you but in this uh, episode we just uh, want to have a, a big picture and introduction to you maybe this epc uh, lessons uh, uh, continue for um, three or four more sessions as i told you before uh, we have also some interfaces between every node in the network you can see for example between e node b and mme the interface is s1 mme or s1 c and here between e node b and s gateway or sgw the interface is s1 u but I told you also before that uh, beside this interface, we have also a protocol and protocol stack, which you, which you should care, take care of them. Uh, for example, in this, uh, in this example, S1 MME or S1 C, the protocol is what? Protocol is S1 AP. And you should also know the protocol stack which I draw for you here IP CTP S1 AP and a sub layer uh, will also be here um, which the name is NAS non access stratum that I will discuss it later and we also have some uh, uh, something about uh, user plane as you see user plane and control plane uh, these these lines are uh, responsible for control plane and the um, blue line is for user plane uh, from now on you should take care of control plane and user plane control plane is responsible for signaling and user plane for the service okay let me change the 
color of my marker so here also the radio port and here is the core part of 4G LTE network uh, which we mm, tell it EPC name it EPC evolve evolved packet core and whole of these systems it, name is EPS evolved packet system uh, so you can see that EPC evolved packet core is contain contains of MME mobility management entity S gateway or SGW P gateway or packet gateway PGW PCRF policy and charging rule function and some other networks that we can see here for example operators IP service or public data network maybe internet or maybe IMS network which is responsible for uh, for the volta uh, service okay uh, because I, uh, from now on I wanna uh, make some more short videos uh, and but m uh, but uh, several more short vid videos but several more videos uh, I think for this session is enough but in the next uh, session I will go through the details of each and the responsive uh, and the function of each network element and um, we will discuss it in detail I hope this video would be informative and useful for you and hope to see you in the next videos. Bye.